absence. I wonder what that word brings to your mind. A number of years ago, I was thinking about the idea of absence, what it means to be absent in different ways and how that might be expressed visually in a photograph. My initial inspiration came from the artwork on Pink Floyd's album, Wish You Were Here, which um, I happen to have here. As usual, the creative minds behind that artwork were Storm Thorgerson and the team at Hypnosis. The imagery picked up the idea of absence from the album's title, Wish You Were Here, and it got me thinking around the theme wondering how we can be absent in one way whilst present in another. My wife and I are fans of the artist Jack Vetriano who is originally from the same area as me and where I now live once again. The two paintings of his which really resonate with me are entitled Elegy for the Dead Admiral and The Singing Butler. Both are beach scenes and we have framed prints of them hanging in our lounge. I'm convinced the beach scenes are based on Leaven Beach, which is close to where Vetriano grew up. And that prompted me to want to use the same location as the setting for my own photographic study on absence. I was also inspired by the work of the Belgian surrealist René Magritte, uh, who's known for his depictions of familiar objects in unfamiliar and unexpected contexts. So after a time of thinking, imagining and reimagining, I eventually found a specific kind of absence on my mind. I began to have a clear vision of how to use the Leave and Beach setting and compose the intended shot. So the surreality of the scene was an homage to Magritte, while the beach setting was a direct reference to Vetriano. I wanted to express the idea that we can be absent from others whilst being physically in their presence. To emphasise this, I wanted the two characters in the composition to appear as if they were from different eras. The male character would be visibly absent, dressed in contemporary clothing and seeming to look at a mobile phone. Though my idea was to make him so not there that pretty much only the clothes remained, the other character would be dressed in a costume suggesting the 1920s or 30s. Through this I wanted to prompt ideas about interpersonal engagement from different eras. I was keen to use softer light, which I thought I would get from either the golden hour, which happens just after sunrise, or before sunset, or from the blue hour, which happens just before uh, sunrise or just after sunset. I also needed a low tide to get a nice expansive beach and two willing models. Well, I found the models Mark and Susanna through a mutual friend and when we met up to discuss the idea, they were really enthusiastic. After comparing their availability with tidal charts and the hours of sunrise and sunset, we agreed to shoot on the 14th of August 2018 at half past eight in the evening with sunset due at eight minutes to nine. So that would allow me to bridge both the golden hour and the blue hour, maybe get the best of both. After briefing Mark and Susanna about the concept, I left them to create their own costumes and I was delighted with what they came up with. We discussed the execution of the concept as we set up for the shoot and we agreed that tension and frustration needed to be obvious. Susanna would be seen kind of firing the cards across the table at the absent mark. At the last minute, I added some intrigue by tucking a specific and significant card into Susanna's headband. To create the shot I had in mind, I built the image from three separate exposures. Uh, firstly, there was the table and chairs with no models. Secondly, the table and chairs with Mark seated. And thirdly, the table and chairs with Susanna firing the cards across them. I used flash to light the subject and help freeze the cards in flight. 
and afterwards it was a case of layering the images in Photoshop to achieve the final composite photograph. On the night, we all felt that we wanted to maximise the shooting opportunity. So, using some other props I brought along, we set up some other shots around the idea of absence and partial absence and just kind of improvised around that for a while. Well, I ended up with five shots that I was really happy with, the original concept and four others. Viewing them together, I sensed there was a central narrative thread, but I couldn't quite grasp it or give expression to what I was feeling. It was then that I wondered if another creative person might bring some helpful insight. So at that point, I reached out to the poet Lucy Berry. Lucy and I had met in an entirely different context some years earlier and we'd had a great time talking about art and photography. Lucy agreed to look at the five images to see if she might suggest a missing narrative through poetry. Well, I recently caught up with Lucy on a Zoom chat to talk about her creative process and what finally became a collaborative piece. Hi Lucy, good to meet you again. Hello, good to see you. So yeah, the purpose of this chat really is to find out about your experiences and um, what's become this combined project of absence. So uh, from the point where I had this idea and then thought, mm, there's a story here. I can't quite see it, but I think I know someone who might. And then came calling. So <laughs> how did it work from your end? Well, it was very exciting because I had, we had worked in such a different area before and chatted and chatted. But... Um, Suddenly to be sent five pictures and told what do you basically what do you make of these? Because my background is that my grandfather was a painter. And so I live amongst images, as you can see. <laughs> Absolutely surrounded by images, and I stare at I look at images all day. And I also worked in advertising, which meant that I worked alongside people who were creating images that I had to met, to put pictures to or vice versa. So I was very comfortable and excited to be contacted by you. And when you said it was about absence, I immediately jumped to the absence of present people. There, There is also going on for me always this also a, a different idea, which I think is in your pictures, but not explicit in any way. Um, the idea of, of a, a present invisible God. So mm -hmm. I have both of those things in my mind, but the one that was foremost uh, was this idea of, of people who are there, but not there for you. Yeah. That they are, um, in the room, but the lights are out. I mean, there are all kinds of phrases, aren't there? Oh, there are. And, yeah, many. What is that phrase? Uh, the lights are on, but nobody's home. Yeah, that's that, the one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. And so, and so, um, and I knew that whatever I had to write, if I was going to write, had to be empty enough that people could hang their own experience on it mm. and full enough that people weren't made more lost than the, than the picture was allowing them to be. So you've, it, with the first picture, you've got um, her throwing the cards at an invisible person. Yeah. And everybody's thinking, what, what's going on? And it needed to be grounded a little. Um, but not too much. Mm. Yeah, and of course, that 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 what is now that the first image was originally the only image that I had in mind, um, and and you know as I've explained earlier in, in this video, but we we started to just improvise with other props that we had there while we had the light and and the, the right conditions, and lo and behold, these other images fell out of it. <laughs> Yes. And you see, isn't it interesting that 
my my, fa my favorite image is the fourth, the woman standing on the beach with the picture. Yes. That is the fourth, isn't it? Mm. She's holding a memento of a non-occasion. Yes. That, I love that. That's kind of shocking, isn't it? it really? Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, if you think about that, how many photographs does one have in one's life, especially selfies, a memento of a non-occasion? Yes. Well, actually, you are not, even you're not present to yourself because you're taking a selfie to put online. <laughs> There's levels of this that are astonishing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that that was part of the the problem I ran into when I, when I ended up with these five images and looked at them and thought that there is a there is a story here that there is a connection I can't quite see what it is but I also felt that this is multi layered um, and it was it was at that point that I thought I, I know someone who might be able to have a, a different view on this <laughs> <laughs> but I think your actors also got it very much didn't they they did we 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 actually we actually had a good chat about the the concept beforehand. Um, and the concept, the, the the core concept has remained there throughout. Was the, the you know absence in the middle of presence, um, and uh, they 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 got that. You naturally went for an absent man. Do you think that men are more absent than women? I think that could be the case. Um, <laughs> just, just put you on the spot here. Yeah, yeah. But as a as a <laughs> as a humorous thing, that there have been many times. Um, in our marriage, we've been married be 40 years later this month, uh, Ruby wedding anniversary this month. And there have been many times my wife has said to me, just, you know, we've been sitting alone in, in the room and, and I've been sitting there just kind of looking and she said, well, what are you thinking about? I said, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just moments where I, I've just, you know, and I think a lot of men do this. We we have a capacity to just go into um, some kind of power saving mode, or just you know switch the brain off, go into neutral, and um, I, I actually have no conscious thoughts going on in our heads. Whereas I think women are constantly thinking, um, and I, so so I think that's probably where that separation came from, making the 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 male character the absent one. Yeah, and um, I've looked at research into this some time ago. Mm. Men's men's minds slash brains idle at at, um, at about seventy percent if nothing is going on, and women idle at, uh, if forty percent is going on. So uh, there's got to be much less going on for women to relax. Yeah, does that make sense? And I think women that thus want to pull men out because they're saying, I'm here, I'm I'm it's all chugging. Where are you? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how did the creative process work out for you? How how did you go from here are five images to here's a set of words? I I looked at them for a long time. You had told me the progression that you thought they had. Mm. Um, I loved the last. I I realized that we had the first and the last, and I could work. I could think about the middle three. Hmm. Um, but but I loved the idea of the two protagonists in the first picture, who was the invisible man and the and the thoroughly present woman, mm -hmm. had both turned into shadows, and that felt very sad. Mm. That that actually. They could own that the, the light was being cast over them, but we couldn't see them anymore. You know, that that yeah. they were blocking out the light and we could see that. And the color of, of the sand is fantastic. Mm. But it's a sad time of day. Yes. Or rather it's a or rather it's a poignant time of day. At the time, at the time we photographed that, it's in what we photographers call the blue hour. Yes. So it's the hour after sunset where predominant colour tends to be bluish. Yes. Um, and it's a blue photograph in in both senses of the word, isn't it? it, it, it yeah, it is. yeah. So yeah. so um I suppose I was working from this is angry, this is frustrated at the front end, and this is 
poignant at the back end mm. and they've gone they've disappeared there's a real person over there but not in not involved yes. And, and that's that, why this idea of the passing world calls out no word. There's no yeah. connection. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whatever the, the, the within my thinking was whatever they've done in their lives, their lives have cast a shadow. Yes. So that's when, when they're gone, our, our lives leave a shadow. Yes, uh, they do. Like, and what kind of shadow? Is it Valley of the Shadow or was yeah. it, did you cast a benign shadow? Yeah. Yeah. The idea of him staring up, you know, he's caught in that frame, isn't he? Is he caught? Yes. Is he trying to climb out? He He's floating. He's not even grounded. No. But I love that one. I know I'm here, I think. But can I even be sure of the sure? Because the sure is certainty and the sure is he's not grounded. So I wanted every there to be lots of hints, but for nothing too concrete. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's got to make their own story. Yeah, and I think it works really well from that point of view. Um, but uh, for me, and I think probably for both of us, uh, the, in terms of artistic work, it's important for people to be able to engage and draw their own story out of it. So we're, we're in a sense, just giving them a, a direction, a, a bit of a pointer. Um, well, all the three exa uh, examples you gave, which were the album cover and Magritte and Vetriano, mm. all three, you're thinking, what is going on? You know? Yes. And of course, the people in Vetriano know what's going on. We don't. They're very confident, aren't they? Uh, yes. But they are uh, absolutely embodied on the sand. Yes. Or well, the postures what? convey that. Yes. Yeah. And, and Magritte, again, is is both uncertain and certain at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember enough about the album cover. Have you got it there? Uh, not to hand, no. Uh, so we're in another room hiding. About what you were here to 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 know whether it's. Uh, well, the thing certain. about the the album cover, the, the 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 most intriguing art about present, not present, is inside. It's not on the out, outer cover of the album. It's inside it. Um, so yeah, which is that that has the the diver who's kind of upright in in this pond. Um, I remember. It's uh, fascinating image. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and apparently the diver who did that had to be able to hold his breath long enough, be still long enough for the actual ripples to set. There was no photoshopping in those days. Oh wow! Yes, so um, you'd have to be very very still. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are um, running out of time here. I've, I've just been given a warning. So I, I think, Lucy, I'll, I'll just say thank you so much for. Well, thank you. I mean, we really words. enjoyed the talk as well. And next time you do a sequence of pictures, please ask me again. I certainly will. You'll be first on the list for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. What began as an idea for one image became a story of absence in five parts, beautifully tied together with Lucy's words. Absence, a story in five parts, now has expression through five fine art prints which are available through my website and a video presentation in which Lucy and her friend Michael provide the narration. Uh, there are links in the description below. Our hope, however, is that you will be inspired and challenged by absence. Perhaps you might reflect on how your own absences affect others, how they take shape, or how you're affected by the absence of another person. This initial project has inspired me to a series on the general theme of absence, and so far I've produced images and related videos on the absent shopper and the absent traveller. There are more to come. So why not consider subscribing to the channel and if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload new content. As ever, thank you for watching this video and please do give it a thumbs up if you like it. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.